viewers. Welcome to this video lecture series that are open for the public reading. Today's topic is going to be about the understanding of negotiated democracy. It is of late that a lot of conversations around democracy are being handled by political scientists as well as other scientific disciplines and areas of knowledge. When it comes to the scholarly work done around the concept of democracy, then we can not exhaust even an eighth of the discourses that have been held around the philosophy of democracy. But let's look at democracy and the law and specifically in reference to a multi-ethnic and diverse political environment of the Republic of Kenya since 2010. To start with today, on 6th of April 2021, for the first time, a, a reality in the electoral justice actually occurred emanating from Garissa County in the northeastern part of Kenya. A veteran senator, Honorable Yusuf Haji, passed on in February and he was such a popular and famous politician that served the country in the capacity of leadership and he was even heading and chairing the task force committee of the BBI. After his death, the three communities in Garissa came to a consensus, a political arrangement to have his son Abdul Qadir Mohammed Haji as his rightful successor in the political position as the senator of the Garissa one-member constituency. When this happens behind the scene and without any state control of the constitutionality of such negotiations as well as the processes in terms of free and fair, accountable, responsible, and free of any corruption or any aspect of intimidation. And as the story goes, on 6th April of 2021, the IEBC gazetted that Abdul Qadir Mohammed Haji was the duly elected member of the Senate after being the only candidate who went unopposed for such election within court that was not subjected for the ballot as a process. As much as this one is politically correct, and as much as negotiations have always served the purpose of social cohesion or political order in some communities, and also of some mutual understanding, one would question the following. Who is doing the negotiation? Who are the parties? Negotiated settlement of political disputes has been very key in certain situations even beyond the Kenyan borders. It isn't the first time, neither is it the last time 
that such negotiated processes bring upon certain political consensus that may afterwards see harmony and continuity in any given society. And if that is the electoral justice for the community, let it be so. But nonetheless, it is also very important to question the constitutionality, the legitimacy, as well as the rule of law when it comes to certain application of certain traditional dispute resolution mechanisms that may be subjected to the comparison and contrast with the constitution, with the written law, as well as with the case law. Kenya has come a long way for her struggle when it comes to political freedom, constitutionalism and constitution, when it comes to some kind of or some level of democracy. But I want to interrogate the following. The constitutional interpretation of negotiated democracy, first to begin with the concept of negotiation, then we look at the concept of democracy. Negotiation is a system in which some issues are subjected to open, balanced deliberations by parties to reach certain agreements and it is always deployed during the arbitrations when we have trade disputes as well as reconciliation and mediation. Negotiation in itself is a process just as democracy is a process. But when we say to negotiate, it is a question of dispute to begin with. In any case, contesters are in dispute and the community cannot decide who is to be given the position, then the community can as well handle it through negotiation and reach out to certain level of mutual agreement that would ensure some level of continuity, mutual understanding, tolerance, and such things have always been traditionally practiced, especially under the auspices of the living customary laws and traditions by various communities in Africa at large. However, let's get the negotiation right, but let's also get the negotiation as a process right. Who are the parties negotiating? And if they are the communities, who represents those communities? And if it is, as we believe, the proscribed council of elders that are nowhere in the constitution of Kenya of 2010, then we are getting our focus closer to the gerontocratic traditional rule by the so-called quote-unquote elders. But how does an individual become an elder? We need to interrogate the process such clans and individuals use to settle on a certain family member, a certain clan member, to be the elder with the power and judicial authority to make decision on behalf. That means that elder must also have representative power. But is that power given or anchored on the constitution of the republic? This is where I find the problem 
with the negotiated democracy. Negotiated settlement is more political than legal in the sense that people should debate, people should dialogue. Cultures are, must also dialogue. And that is the leeway for alternative justice system and transitional justice systems of which Kenya is a lifetime. I want to speak to the concept of democracy. When we talk about the concept of democracy, democracy has been a very complicated concept. And for years, even the Greeks that first and foremost in the 4th century BC had already grappled with the deep meaning of democracy Socrates himself, Plato, Aristotle, and in the dialogues written by Plato in the Republic, we revisit the concept of democracy and the understanding of the Athenian philosophers about the interpretation and the philosophy of the word democracy. Demos meaning the people. Kratia, meaning rule, rule of the people, with the people, and of the people. But however, still, we are talking of many centuries back then, and we are in the 21st century after Christ, and this means the concept and the conceptualization of democracy has dramatically changed. The Athenians, which was a city-state, might have been few individuals in terms of citizens. Such realities were smaller than what we have today and also may be perhaps the diversities in cultures were reduced and maybe they were only pure Greeks. Today we talk of a country such as Kenya with its over 47 million citizens according to the last census. And in this case, we find that Kenya is one of the multi-ethnic and also multicultural reality even though the vast majority are still Africans by decency, we still have some minority communities of Pakistani, Indians, but also some Europeans and Arabs. Despite all this, the addressing of democracy to a certain community that is already multi-ethnic, multicultural, becomes indeed a big challenge for a young democracy as the Republic of Kenya. In this situation in which the community comes up with a nomination after certain negotiation and declares an individual a nominee of a position considered national position in accordance with the Constitution, the Senate is one of the two houses that define or represent the national parliament. Parliament has the Senate as well as the National Assembly, but parliament makes its decisions, deliberations, and functions in the national capacity as opposed to maybe small constituencies in which the community can rule or can overrule certain decisions. Whether it is true or not that no political party presented a candidate to contest other than the Jubilee Party of which Abdul Haji stood for, is still in doubt. 
Another thing that is in doubt, the constitution is open to any candidate that is sponsored by a registered political party and any candidate that is considered independent, that means partyless or is not sponsored by any political party in the Republic of Kenya. This brings us again to the question of liberal democracy that should define our constitution and the constitutionalism in this transformative system. Kenya is undergoing a very dynamic change when it comes to its judicial system, but also the legal system that sees to it that the, law, the apex law is the constitution and all decisions must be made in accordance with the constitution as per article 2, sub article 4, all laws, including the African customary law that is not consistent with the constitution shall be considered void to an extent of being inconsistent. By this reading, and together with the national values and principles of governance under Article 10, that includes patriotism, includes public participation, as well as the rule of law, human rights, and democracy as values and principles that should guide any decision-making process. The entire interpretation of democracy within the law is indeed very ambiguous because the same democracy can as well be lack of democracy and that was already known to the very founders of the idea of democracy, the Greeks. The Greeks were known to be philosophers. And in that case, the interrogation of democracy by philosophers such as Socrates that saw that in the democracy, we can end up with demagogy. So when the demos become crazy in some manner, then it can result into something very and fair and, and free. This is where we find that we need to be clear in our interpretation of what is exactly the democracy and where to map out the negotiated democracy in the republic within the constitution. If the same constitution has not sanctioned the traditional authority as other constitutions in Uganda, in South Africa, and also in Ghana, Nigeria, Malawi, and other African countries, then whatever emanates from the proscribed Council of Elders should be treated with some clear prudence and also with carefulness as maybe certain use of such negotiations can as well be intimidating, can become a sort of dictatorship in disguise. Just recently, in the same month, we have seen the pushing of President Mohammed for Majo in Somalia that managed to persuade Parliament to extend the life of Parliament and also his presidency for the next two years. Use of clans or use of certain groups that represent quote-unquote communities must be subjected to the sovereignty as well as legitimacy and in this case it is the state to enable us to understand the 
legitimacy of the Council of Elders, the legitimacy and legality of the negotiations when it comes to democracy. In addition, elections must be done because elections form part and parcel of the rights of the citizens. Citizens must be given the ballot. Even non-contests in which there is an opposed candidate, there must be a process in which people, in this case the voters, can line up and cast their ballots, whether it is yes or no, because this one candidate, that one would suffice the requirements of liberal democracy because it is of the people, by the people, and of the people. But when it comes to democracy subjected to the majority rule, in which we say majority has its way, whereas minority has its say, that kind of tyranny of numbers can as well be misleading, just in the equal measure. All the same, we admit in this lecture that democratization as a process is a long way to go. No country on earth can claim the full achievement of democracy. And no country, whether civilized or uncivilized, can stand tall to lecture other nations about what the democracy is and what it is not. This does not spare Kenya, and we need to admit that Kenya is in the process of getting the entire intrigue of the democracy into its right position, but this one doesn't come without some pain, without some disputes. South Africa has used several times negotiation as a process to strike peace deal in its multiracial atmosphere. And in that case, where the minority groups cannot ascend to power because of numbers, then negotiations can be the tools for mediation. But this must be done within the spirit of the rule of law, also within the spirit of the constitution, and must not be seen to be repugnant to justice and morality, must not be seen to be in contravention with any written law. The Constitution of Kenya is addressing this issue, but there is an open-ended possibility of several questions that should be subjected to any academic research in lieu of seeking a robust jurisprudence to guide our legal system and the judicial system in electoral justice. Thank you for watching. Peter here.